Maya Hughes, a young girl living in Sierra Leone, was facing a life-threatening medical emergency that required immediate attention in the United States. Her mother, Zine of Sisse, was deeply concerned for her daughter's health, but was in a difficult situation herself. She was dealing with long-standing family issues in Sierra Leone, and she simply couldn't leave the country. The only option was to send Maya to the U.S., where she could receive the medical care she desperately needed. The problem was that there was no one in the family who could accompany Maya on the long journey to the U.S., leaving Sisse with the nearly impossible task of finding a stranger at the airport willing to be Maya's chaperone. In a moment of desperation, Sisse took a deep breath and did the unthinkable. She entrusted her daughter's life to a man she had met only hours earlier. This decision would change the course of their lives forever, and what they would learn 15 years later would be nothing short of astonishing. In 2003, Zeynab Sisse decided to take a six-month trip back to her homeland of Sierra Leone with her five-year-old daughter, Maya. It had been 10 years since Sisse had last visited, and she was eager to reconnect with her roots and introduce Maya to her extended family. But this long-awaited visit took a sudden and dangerous turn when Maya fell gravely ill just four months into their stay. The illness came as a shock, and Hughes herself would later describe the situation as life-threatening. It was a life-and-death type situation, she recalled in a 15 years after the incident. Cisse was left grappling with an impossible choice. She had to stay in Sierra Leone to address her family matters, but Maya needed urgent medical attention in the United States. With no family members available to fly with her daughter, Cisse was forced to consider asking a complete stranger to accompany Maya. Sending a five-year-old child on an international flight alone is something most parents would never dream of. While airlines allow young children to travel as unaccompanied minors, the idea of putting Maya on a plane without a trusted adult was heart-wrenching for Cisse. But time was running out, and Maya's health was deteriorating rapidly. Cisse arrived at the airport with Maya, hoping against hope that she could find someone trustworthy to take her daughter back to the U.S. She began asking passengers if they were willing to be Maya's chaperone. Of course, everybody had an excuse. Hughes remembered, reflecting on the chaotic situation. Desperation growing, Cisse turned to a gate agent and asked if anyone in the waiting area was headed to the United States. The gate agent, speaking in Creole, pointed to a man standing nearby. Well, you know, that white guy over there is traveling, the agent said. Without hesitation, Cisse approached the man and asked him a question she would later describe as the most insane question anyone could possibly ask. She asked this total stranger if he would be willing to take Maya on the flight to the U.S. Initially, the man, Tom Periello, was understandably hesitant. He told Cisse that he was not in the right frame of mind to travel with a child, as he was still reeling from the recent death of his grandmother. Periello was on his way back to the U.S. to attend her funeral and was emotionally drained. Despite this, when he learned about Maya's critical condition, his heart softened. He agreed to be her guardian on the flight, understanding the gravity of the situation. With that, Cisse watched in disbelief as her daughter boarded an international flight with a man she had just met. She stayed at the airport until the plane took off, torn between relief and fear. All of a sudden, the adrenaline kind of went away and I realized, oh my god, I just handed my only child at the time to a complete stranger, she later recounted. Was her daughter truly in safe hands? Had she made the right decision? As the plane took off, Maya began her journey with Periello, a man who had never flown with a child before, let alone one he had met just hours earlier. The pair faced multiple layovers and Periello, though well-meaning, struggled to keep up with the needs of a young girl. Thankfully, flight attendants stepped in to help, even going so far as to offer first-class meals to the duo. Though Maya was only five years old, she vividly remembers the journey. She recalled the confusion and fear of the day, saying, I just remember crying a lot on the plane. She also remembered Periello's efforts to comfort her, he was really nice, she said, adding that he sang songs in Creole to help calm her down. Despite the overwhelming situation, Maya held a deep respect for the man who was doing his best to care for her. After what must have felt like an eternity, Maya and Periello finally landed at Dulles International Airport, where her grandmother was waiting to pick her up. Maya was soon wrapped in her grandmother's loving arms, while Periello quietly slipped away, having fulfilled his role as her temporary guardian. The experience left a lasting impression on Maya, who never forgot the man who had helped her in her time of need. For years, she would ask her mother about the stranger who had flown with her, expressing disbelief that Sisse had trusted him without knowing his name or background. Despite their curiosity, 
Cisse and Maya had no way of tracking him down. That changed when, a decade later, Cisse told the story to one of her cousins. The cousin remembered hearing a similar tale from a former colleague, and though she had lost contact with him, she provided Cisse with a name, Tom Periello. Six more years passed, and in 2018, Cisse's cousin visited her in the United States. During their conversation, the cousin asked if Cisse had ever found the man from the airport. When Cisse replied that she hadn't, her cousin mentioned the name again, Tom Periello. Finally, armed with a name, Cisse began her search in earnest. She managed to track down Periello's email address and sent him a message, detailing the situation and apologizing for any inconvenience she may have caused. She wasn't sure if Periello would remember the event or even if she had the right person, but she felt compelled to reach out. To her surprise, Periello responded, confirming that he was indeed the man who had helped Maya 15 years earlier. I jumped out of my seat, Cisse said, recalling her excitement. She couldn't believe that after all these years, they had finally found him. Periello, too, remembered the experience vividly. He explained that at the time, he had been working as a spokesperson and advisor for the United Nations. He was in Sierra Leone to participate in a war crimes tribunal, which was responsible for prosecuting individuals involved in human rights abuses during the Civil War. On top of this, he was grieving the loss of his grandmother and preparing for her funeral. It was in some ways the worst possible emotional space to be in, Periello admitted. He was focused on his own travel plans when Sissi approached him at the airport, and at first he didn't fully register what she was asking. But eventually, her desperation and the urgency of the situation moved him to agree to help. Reflecting on the experience, Periello said it felt like something out of a movie. It just wasn't clear if it was a happy or a sad movie, he said. He confirmed Maya's memories, including his attempts to sing a song in Creole to calm her down during the flight. The journey wasn't without its challenges. There was some serious drama on each leg of the trip, Periello explained, adding that airline officials and angels along the way helped ensure Maya's safe arrival. One of the most emotional moments for Periello came when he saw Maya run into her grandmother's arms at the airport. One of the happier moments in my life was seeing Maya run into her grandmother's arms, he said. However, what Maya and Cissé didn't know at the time was that Periello's act of kindness came at a personal cost. By helping Maya, he missed his own grandmother's funeral. When Cissé learned this years later, she was deeply saddened. That really dampened my heart, she said. It was horrible. I didn't realize. After reconnecting via email, Maya couldn't contain her excitement and shared, My mom has been trying to find this man for 15 years. We never got his name or anything, she said. There's a huge possibility I wouldn't be here today if this man didn't bring me back. Even Periolo chimed in, responding, One of the craziest experiences of my entire life and I could not be happier to know you were shining bright, Maya. In the end, the three of them, Maya, Sisse, and Periello, agreed to meet in person, hoping to fill in the gaps and properly thank the man who had played such a crucial role in their lives. It's been an emotional week, Periello said, and I think I didn't realize how much closure I needed on the experience. Maya and Sisse will forever be grateful for Periello's selfless act. He's genuinely a good person, Maya said. If it wasn't for him, I don't know how I would have made it back. For Sisse, the long search was over, and she could finally express her thanks in person. For 15 years, I was looking for this ghost, she said. I hope to meet with him to get the opportunity to shake his hand, hug him, and thank him for having done that. Periello's act of kindness serves as a reminder of the power of humanity, even in the most unexpected circumstances.